Welcome to the Studio Backlot Tour. For a safe trip, please remain seated with your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the tram. And be sure to watch your children. Thank you. Bienvenidos. Para que tengan un viaje seguro, permanezcan sentados, con las manos, brazos, pies y piernas dentro del tren. Y vigilen a los niños. Gracias. We're all clear, driver. All right, everybody, welcome aboard the second part of the Backlot Tour. Now, things here on the Backlot are always changing, so be sure to keep an eye out for some new Western scenery from the Lone Ranger and some nifty new additions in our costuming tunnel from some recent movie hits. Enjoy your tour. Hello, everyone. My name's Don, and welcome aboard. We're heading into the back lot of Disney's Hollywood Studios. This production area was built in 1988 as a Florida counterpart to the Walt Disney Studios in Burbank, California. We included sound stages, recording studios, high-tech editing rooms, all the tools needed to create movies, TV shows, and radio broadcasts. We've even got our very own water tower, too. It's up ahead on the left side of our shuttle. We call it the Earful Tower. It's inspired by the water tower Walt Disney had built for his Burbank studio in 1939. Our Florida tower stands a lucky 13 stories high, and we added our own creative touch, a giant set of Mickey Mouse ears. If you wanted to wear those ears, you'd have to have a hat size of 342 and 3 eighths. Up ahead, after the next bend in the road, you'll have a perfect opportunity to take a picture of this famous icon. In the world of entertainment, every project starts with a screenplay and a lot of creative ideas. A production studio is where the ideas of writers, producers, and directors are transformed into an on-screen reality. Within these huge spaces, filmmakers can literally create their own worlds. Our Florida sound stages are soundproof, weatherproof, and most importantly, air-conditioned, all vitally important for the cast, crew, and equipment. Many of the crafts needed for filmmaking are located right here on the lot. On the left, we have our own greens department. It grows flowers, trees, shrubs, and topiaries. A few well-placed plants can cover up empty spots in the set and add a touch of natural beauty to a scene. On the right are two of the aircraft from the 2001 blockbuster hit Pearl Harbor. These exact full-scale replicas of P-40 fighters were used in the special effect fight sequences. Of course, many of the planes you saw flying through the aerial battles or sitting on the ground weren't real at all. They were created entirely within a computer. Oh, keep your cameras focused to the right. We're coming up on that perfect angle of the Earful Tower I told you about. It's a true masterpiece. <laughs> We're entering one of our most glamorous and colorful departments, creative costuming. Every star has to have just the right wardrobe, and it all begins here with a designer's sketch. Our team of designers, seamstresses, and tailors can turn one and a half million yards of fabric into over 25,000 costumes every year. Many of these costumes will become part of the shows and attractions of the Walt Disney World Resort. In fact, here in Florida, we have the largest working wardrobe department in the world. Why Mickey Mouse alone has over 175 different outfits to choose from, while Minnie Mouse keeps more than 200 unique costumes in her wardrobe. On the left are costumes worn by the stars in recent studio productions. You'll probably recognize some of those costumes from the big screen. Every story needs a setting, and our design staff can create just about any place a script calls for, from an urban city street to a remote desert canyon. On the left is our scenic shop where large-scale sets and props are built. Our team of set designers, carpenters, artists, and engineers has created caves and caverns, game show sets, even replicas of the U.S. Supreme Court and NASA's Mission Control, all on our sound stages. The shop also provides sets and props for our shows and parades here at Walt Disney World. The same skill and craftsmanship that goes into a movie set can also be used to create magic for our parks. Either way, it's all about making dreams come true. Now we're entering a zone we call the Boneyard. It's an outdoor storage area for oversized props and vehicles. Cars, trucks, boats, planes, we often save these props in case we need them for future productions. In this backlot collection, you may find real working vehicles, non-working mock-ups, and even large-scale miniatures used in special effects shots. 
large scale models create a more convincing illusion on camera. We're now passing by the sets for our lights, motors, action, extreme stunt show. On the left, you may catch a glimpse of the Mediterranean fishing village that sets the stage for this thrilling attraction. We'll get a closer look at it soon, but for now, we're approaching one of the largest standing sets on our back lot. It's over on the right. It may not look like much from this angle, but it's pretty spectacular on the other side. This is great, folks. The production crew has just given us clearance to enter the set. Hello, Backlot Tour. I'm Amy, a production coordinator here at the studios. I can see your shuttle heading toward our canyon set. I've given your driver permission to come in and take a look around. I'm up here with our effects crew, and we're getting ready to shoot a test sequence. Oh, on the way in, you're going to be crossing a wooden bridge, and things may get a little bumpy, so please, hold on to your belongings, especially hats, cameras, and glasses, and keep an eye on any small children in your party. And of course, please remain seated at all times. Welcome to the set. As you can see, we've brought the bare, dry deserts of Southern California to green, typically humid, Central Florida. This set is based on real locations that our production designer took pictures of. Our set crew spent about six months building the canyon, but we've used it for a number of TV shows and specials over the years. For our upcoming production, the script called for a tanker truck. We found this one in our boneyard, but it was too big to drive into place. So we picked it up with a crane and set it down here. We're up on the overhead platforms and I see our director has arrived. As soon as the rain effect is ready, We'll begin the sequence. This sudden shower is really just a special effect. We've rigged up a series of water nozzles just above your tram. The water sprays in a crisscross pattern to create a sense of depth. But this storm only covers the first few feet of the set. Okay, it's showtime. Everybody stay seated. Hang on to your belongings and watch your children. for the scene. 
the entire sequence can be reset in three and a half minutes. That's just enough time to bring in the next shuttle. Well, I've got to get ready for our next take. Thank you all for being part of the action. Hey, I'm needed back on the set, so enjoy the rest of your tour. Okay, well thanks, Amy, for giving us access to the set. Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Scanaway, director of the new Disney Toon Studios animated feature, Planes, Fire, and Rescue. Looks like the historic aircraft on the right is getting into the spirit of our new film. It would fit right in with Dusty Crop Hopper, Dipper, and all their high-flying friends from Piston Peak National Park. You know, that plane was known at airports across the country as November 234 Mickey Mouse, or the mouse for short. Back in the early 1960s, Walt Disney himself used this plane to scout locations for what he referred to as the Florida Project. His team purchased many acres of land here in Central Florida, but they kept the Disney connection a well-guarded secret. Eventually, the secret was out, and the Walt Disney World Resort became a reality. Enjoy the rest of your tour, and I hope you enjoy Planes, Fire, and Rescue. On our right, we once again sweep past the magnificent Mediterranean village of our lights, motors, action extreme stunt show. This high octane attraction is based on the hit show from the Walt Disney Studios Park in France. In this action packed production, you'll feel like you're right there on the set during the filming of a spy thriller, complete with custom built cars, motorcycles, even jet skis. You'll experience the split second timing, coordinated driving, and fiery special effects that make action movies a real blast. The staging area to our right is known as Acceleration Alley. Here, the custom-built stunt show vehicles rev their engines up to 70 miles an hour before making their high-speed entrances onto the stage for our lights, motors, action extreme stunt show. Of course, these are professional stunt drivers. We hope you'll enjoy their daring driving skills, but please, don't try them yourself. On the left, we've reached our second boneyard with more historic props and vehicles. When we reuse older props in a new production, they're often refitted with custom parts and given a whole new color scheme. You might not even recognize them the next time you see them on screen. For instance, coming up is our friend Herbie the Love Bug. He went through a special demolition derby makeover. Those dents and dings were added on purpose, but he can be polished up as good as new for his next starring role. On our right, we now have a very different view of the fishing village set. From this point of view, you can see that there is no inside of the buildings. They are just false fronts or facades. In the movie business, set builders only create what the camera has to see. It's an old movie trick dating all the way back to the silent era. To add to the sense of realism and avoid the cost of set building, many of today's television shows and movies film on location in cities and towns across the U.S. But out in the real world, you've got to contend with noise, traffic, crowds, and various visual elements that may or may not belong in your film. Here on the back lot, we can avoid these problems because we created our very own flexible urban environment. Our Streets of America facades can stand in for a small town or a giant metropolis. As we come around the last corner on our route, you'll see the skyline of New York City in the distance. It's really a series of painted flats, expertly designed to fool the eye and the camera. We can dress and decorate these streets to look like any city we want, from Chicago to San Francisco. Depending on the choice of vehicles, props, and costumes, we can even turn back the clock and set our story in a different time. And what's more, these sets are built with Florida weather in mind. They're made to withstand 100 mile an hour winds. You're welcome to visit our Streets of America anytime during your visit today and get an up close look at the skills of our set designers and builders. This concludes the second portion of the tour today. Thanks for joining us here in the back lot. We hope that you enjoyed your time here. Now for your safety, if you would please continue to remain seated while we are moving. Once we do come to a complete stop, I'll be opening the doors back up on your right-hand side. So if you are seated on the right, just be sure to watch your arms and legs while those doors are opening. And we do ask, please, again for your safety, that you remain seated inside the shuttle until your door has fully opened up. Once your doors have opened all the way up, there is just one exit from this part of the attraction today, which is toward the rear of the shuttle. So you'll just be crossing over that yellow safety line. 
make a right-hand turn all the way down to the end of our dock. You'll see my friend Jim down there. He's going to show you the way back out into Disney's Hollywood Studios. Thanks again for joining us here in the back lot, folks, and have a wonderful day. Take care now.